We once again greet all of you in the name of Christ. Those who have joined us by live stream. This is a, this is a fellowship. We're glad to have you among us. Tonight we're in the Gospel of John. This will be our fifth exposition of this book. I think while we're still at the beginning of this letter, I want to remind us of the objective, why this book was written. That we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that believing we might have life through his name. Two noble objectives. Yes, amen. First, that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Uh -huh. yeah. I say that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, amen. the Son of God. Yeah. Amen. And second, that we might have life in his name. Of course, believing is the means by which we experience life through his name. Now, with an objective like that, we ought to expect a lot of emphasis on deity. And, of course, that is what's going to be found. See, the secret to men doing the will of God is to have a right emphasis. An emphasis that's on deity, what God does. In the capacity of Christ and God. The Christ, see this is something you don't hear hardly, hardly anything about this. For a long time. For several decades, hardly yeah. anything about this has been said. Yeah. I'm not sure why. I, th I think maybe it's because people assume that it's understood, but it's, it's not. Yeah. The Christ means the anointed one, but see, nobody knows what that means. Yeah. That's the one on whom the blessing has been conferred, yeah. and the one, it's not two, it's just one. Yeah and the one through whom everything is accomplished. Amen. He is the distributor uh -huh. and the receiver, both. He's the blessor and he's the blessing yeah. himself. Amen. He's the seed of the woman and the prophet uh -huh. declared by Moses. He's the Shiloh of Jacob. Yeah. This is the Christ we're talking about. Amen. He's the son, the child, the man, and the servant of Isaiah. This is who we're talking about. And he's the righteous branch of Jeremiah and David their king of Hosea. He's the son of righteousness of Malachi. He's a Jewish Messiah that has been appointed to lighten the Gentiles. Yeah, this is who we're talking about here the son of righteousness of Malachi. It was to Joseph and Mary that it was said he was a light to light in the Gentiles. They were told this when Jesus was dedicated. Mm -hmm. See, some men look for a utopia. That's what they're looking for. Uh -huh. That's really what they're looking That's for. Right. Salvation is not what they're looking yeah. for. Uh -huh. A lot of people that, well, you can't be naive at this point. Yeah. But a lot of people talk about Jesus, they really want a little bit of utopia is what they really want. They really want kind of smooth sailing. That's what they really want, and they ought to be honest and just say that. Not lead us to believe they're really interested in Christ, because if they were, they'd be repenting. They'd be begging for Christ to receive them. They'd be asking you to tell them more. But you don't be naive about this kind of thing. People who really want to be saved are very vocal about it. Yes. What should we do? Amen. Yes. Until they say that, I just figure they're not serious. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Other people just look for an ideal society. They, uh, they want someone to straighten their marriage out for them. I mean, they're the ones that got married. They're the ones that chose their mate. Why don't they devote themselves to correcting their marriage? What are they asking us to do something about it for, huh? Yeah, aren't you interested? Yes, I'm interested, but only if they're interested. Yeah. Amen. If they're not, I just got turned to somebody else, that's yeah. all. John's going to show us the person of Christ. He's not going to show us human potential. <laughs> that's not what he's going to talk about. Amen. He's not going to say, you can do it if you want to. You can do it. You can do it. He's not, this is not, this isn't the way. Mm -hmm. He's going to talk. He's going to tell us about the one who addressed this matter of sin. And if you're not interested in that, uh -huh. I mean, we really don't have anything else to say. Amen. Yeah. All the trouble that we have and have had is Amen. due to sin. Yeah. All of it. Uh -huh. If it's not ours, if it's like opponents, it's theirs. But it's all, it all had to do with sin. Uh -huh. And Jesus, now this, he looms pretty big in this area. Uh -huh. yeah. He's the one. And he's the one that defeated the arch foe. So he's the one really we want to hear about. He's the one through whom men are made righteous and suited for glory. Because if you're not righteous, you can't get in. You, you got to be righteous before you leave the world. Righteous by God's standard of right. He's the one that has to conclude you're righteous, see. So we have a big interest in that. Jesus dwarfs all of the personalities. He's just, <laughs> he's the theme of the gospel. That's what the, he's the, he's just a gospel theme. And he's the object of hope. And he's the means of obtaining glory. So it's fitting that when John begins his gospel, he has an extensive dialogue about Christ. I mean, that Amen. makes a lot of sense. So we're going to be in verses 12 and 13. These are two, two pretty, very central type verses here. He just has told us that he came, he was in the world, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own and his own didn't receive him. But, but, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, well, I say, which were born, not of the blood, nor of the will of man, the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. But, let's see, that's an important, it's an important word. Grammatically, it's a continuative primary particle. That really opened up things I can see. That is, it's a continuation of something that was previously stated as compared to a thought that was terminated and a new thought started. See, that's, but I'm, it's, I'm not done talking about what I was, what I was talking about, I'm not finished yet. I've got some more to say on this subject. So the preceding sentence was, he came into his own and his own received him not. But that's not the end of the issue. Amen. <laughs> the salvation of God is something that was developed before the world began. Yeah. And it's, it's not going to like be aborted because the people to whom it was addressed and for whom it was prepared didn't receive it. Amen. That doesn't mean the plan's off. Yeah. That's right. That doesn't mean we're going to switch to a new. Uh -huh. There's some theology that does teach. Oh, yeah this very aggressively uh -huh. that the prophetic time clock has stopped yeah. and it's on hold mm -hmm. this sounds weird to you it's because it is weird yeah. but this is a very prominent doctrine yeah. time clock has stopped time's on hold and we're like in a period where, where God's purpose is not being enacted mm. and, it, and it's going to start up again later when the Jews are converted mm. that's the theology God was kind of caught off guard. Uh -huh. Well, see, that isn't the truth. Amen. That's right. 
at all. The Savior himself was slain before the foundation of the world. I'm showing you that this, this thing didn't start till everything was determined. The lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The kingdom that to be inherited was, pre was prepared for us before the foundation of the world. And those designated to be saved were chosen to salvation from the beginning yes. through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. So see everything, this is the eternal salvation we're talking about, an eternal purpose we're talking about. So according to appearance, it may look as though, for a season, as though God sent the Son into the world in vain because he was in the world, the world's made by him, they didn't, they didn't know it was. He came into his own, the Jews who had been cultured to receive him. They had 1,500 years of hard work and prophecy and so forth to prepare him. And here he came, they didn't recognize him. So for anybody but God, that would be very, very, very frustrating. During his earthly ministry, Jesus told the people, who rejected the, him what was going to be done. And yeah, see the word but tells you, I'm not uh, finished with this yeah. Yeah. project yet. This sentence I gave you back there, but his own received him not, there's a, there, it is to be continued. Yeah. Yeah. So he told them what was gonna happen. Here's, here's, here's his words, Matthew 21, 42. Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same as become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in their eyes. Then he told them what he's going to do. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. So that's what we're going to do. You turned it down. So now we're going to go to somebody else. Now that's how you treat belligerent sinners. That's right. uh -huh. This is what you do. Doesn't mean in your heart you're not interested in that, but you just turn your labor someplace else. Yeah. I mean, Paul gave him like three Sabbaths. Uh -huh. yeah. Gave him three Sabbaths. Yeah. Then he moved out. That's yeah. three days. That's right. Uh -huh. And it was, yes. Master did say, after one year of ministry, <laughs> At the second Passover, he said, you refuse to come to me. That's right. Mm -hmm. He said that after the first year. Yeah. Mm. See, this, yeah. Is, this is God now. That's right. But that's not a certain expression of frustration. See, for men, that would be a uh -huh. statement of frustration. What's the use? But that's, that's not the way it is here. This just means we're going to, there's a whole body of people out of there. In fact, it's the majority of the human race. Yeah. It's the yeah. minority of the human race turned it down. Yeah. So now we're going to turn to the rest of the human race. Amen. How's that? Yeah, yeah. A small minority. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A small minority turned it down. So the purpose of God would continue on whether that generation of Jews accepted it or not. Yes. I remember when, it turned, when he rejected them, some people teach he rejected the whole Israel. He rejected that generation. Yes. That's, right. that's a big difference there. Yes. To that generation, we may be. It's my personal opinion. I would, uh, I would have no objection if I ended up wrong. But is my, is my persuasion that we are living in a rejected generation? That's why a lot of efforts are like, looks like it's pointless. Don't, don't, don't cease your efforts by any stretch of imagination. But that's what it looks like. We got but even in a rejected generation, there's that remnant. Amen. Yes. Even in the rejected one. Paul and Barnabas say they were didn't even stay three. They just delivered one one oration. Yeah. Paul delivered one a single oration yeah. to Antioch of Pisidia. Paul and Barnabas then they said, well, it was necessary that the word. Of God should have first be spoken to you. Maybe we had to we had to stop off here first. Uh -huh, yeah. But seeing that you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. 
In another place it says that they will hear. <laughs> that was after one. That was after one. Uh -huh. Sir, once. Yeah. Not in a hometown. This is in a, it's in a different, this is put by a place where they normally weren't, didn't go. One time. But they had perception, see. They had, That's right. they had discernment. If they would have said, none of you people are interested in the Lord, see that there had been objections come up all over the place. Huh? What do you mean we're not? We're here, we're on the synagogue, you're in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. We have an we hear the scriptures read, we're interested in this, we pray, we're interested in this, see, but they, they deserve it. If you don't want the gospel, no, you're not interested. That's right. Yeah. That's, That's just yeah. the unvarnished truth. Someone's uh -huh. got to say it. Yeah. Someone's got to tell people this. Yeah, you, yeah you, you look like you're serious. But you're not serious, or you'd have found what you're looking for. Yeah. Amen. You admit you're hunting and you're searching, and huh? years a year after year passes, and you're still hunting and you're still searching, and more years pass, more people come and go and still hunt. They're not searching, they're not seeking. That's what the problem is. Yeah. Amen. But, she says, this isn't going to stop what yeah. God is doing. Then he says, uh, but as many, as many, I want to look at that, as many. Now, other versions, they, they translate it different, even though that is, a, that is as many as. That's an accurate translation, speaking from the standpoint of language. Other versions, read, here's an NIV, to all. To all who believe. All those who did receive him. See, basic Bible English. To everyone who receives him. God's Word Bible. The contemporary English version says, yet some people. Oh, sorry to that. Now, I admit that this may sound a bit technical. But the same thing, but see, as many as sets a limit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. To all who believe, that's from mm -hmm. the response perspective. Mm -hmm. It's a different view. It's a valid view. That's a valid view, but that's not what he's saying here. Mm -hmm. He's saying God has built a fence here. Uh -huh. It's only as many. If they don't, if the people we're talking about don't do what I'm going to say, uh -huh. they are out. Amen. If they do, they are in. Yeah. Amen. He has a different perspective. I, I personally like that perspective. I don't like wishy-washy stuff. Uh -huh. And we live in a time of India rubber conviction, where if you have a firm conviction, you're, you're viewed as being hypercritical or a legalist or something like this. But... Uh, that's what this is. He said he's identifying mm -hmm. the limits. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's not excluded. Mm -hmm. He's not saying, well, whoever does believe it. That's, tr that's true from the standpoint of technicality. That's true. But what he's saying is, it's only as many as. Yeah. Amen. That's the one who's going to receive him. Mm -hmm. As many as think it's interesting? No, <laughs> that's, a, that's not it. Mm -hmm. As many as will listen to you, that's not, that's not what it's going to say. Yeah. As many as express a re resolve, that, that's, that's not what he says. As many as desire to quit this and quit that, that's not what he said. As many as received him. Amen. That's the limitation now. Uh -huh. This isn't going to happen to anybody else. Yeah. As many as received him, all right, the world didn't even know him. His own didn't receive him. But as many as received him yeah. or welcomed him, yeah. uh -huh. glad they heard about him and came to him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The Amplified Bible says received and welcomed him. The idea is that the Lord's Christ was received as he was presented to them. See, there is a Jesus people will receive who won't receive the real one. 
Yeah, yes, uh, Sister June. As many as received him, would that not be synonymous with those who believed on him? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that would be according to the truth as it is in Jesus. That's right. Not modifying it, but mm -hmm. as he was presented in his own words and in the words of prophets and you know those that, that God had spoken to, even through Simeon, when he said, mine eyes have seen the salvation yes, of the Lord, that those that, that testified of the truth, if they believe that, and then there's a connection also between that and having an honest and a good heart. Amen. Because truth, truth is at home in the in an honest and a good heart. Amen. And it, Amen. it has no place in one that is not. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. He explains as later that he, those who received him are the ones who believed mm -hmm. on yeah. his name. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that is the one. And as I have mentioned, he's received in the capacity in which he's been presented. Yeah. Amen. For instance, John presented him as the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Well, that, that's how you got. That's how he's to be received. Uh -huh. yeah. Jesus presented himself as the way, the truth, and the life. That's that's how how he's to be received. Yeah. The light of the world, the bread of life, the door, the good shepherd. Jesus said all of that. See that. Both Peter and Paul said he's the Savior. He's, that's how he's got to be received. Amen. He's to be received in that capacity. Yeah. Paul also said he's a blessed and only potentate. That. Yeah. That's how he's got to be received. He also said he's one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. That's how he's got to be received. He's a high priest set at the right hand of the majesty in the heaven. See that? Mm -hmm. That's how he's received. He's the head of the church, which is his body. That's how he's to be received. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a body. See, a, an individual congregation is called a body. Mm -hmm. This is a body yeah. sitting here. Amen. Jesus is the Savior mm -hmm. of this body. Amen. That's, right. Amen. That's how he's got to be received. Yeah. The point is that he's received as a uh, in his all of his glorious capacities. Amen. You can't cook up your idea about Christ and then someone receive that. That's right. Yeah. Perhaps a mender of marriages. That's not how he's presented in Scripture. Mm -hmm. In fact, he'll split some up. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. To attempt to receive Jesus in any other capacity equates to rejecting Jesus. Yes. Amen. If God presents Jesus right. in this manner tells you what he is, but you choose to receive him in some other capacity that he hasn't revealed, you, the person has chosen to reject yeah. Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's how it's viewed in heaven, even though there might have been a lot of preaching about this particular kind of yeah. Jesus. Yeah. When he was on earth, there were some who were willing to receive him as a supplier of bread. Hey, mm -hmm. they were willing. Oh, yeah. If he served lunch every day, they'd have been there. That's right. They were willing to receive him like that. Mm -hmm. They were even willing to receive him as a healer. Uh -huh. Oh, they'd, be, they'd receive him as a healer, mm -hmm. even as a good teacher. Yeah. They were kind of enthralled by his teaching. When it came to receiving him as a savior from sin, <laughs> some would receive him as a carpenter. Mm -hmm. But that, 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 that's not receiving him. And he's presented as the captain of our salvation, the sole person who can be trusted. Most people balk. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, it ought to be apparent to us that we're living in a generation that, for the most part, has rejected Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see, how do you know that? Because they haven't been made free. The Son makes people free. But he doesn't make people free that reject him. Because I really don't want to be free. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. All right, now what are we going to do with these people that receive him? To them give you power to become the sons of God. Yeah. To them. 
That expression belongs exclusively to the ones who received him. Exclusive to them. As he's been presented by the gospel, which is the record God has given of his son. So God dictates yes. how Jesus is to be received. Amen. In what capacities Amen. he's to be trusted. God himself has defined that. Right. Then Jesus clarified it. Yeah. Any other Jesus is another Jesus. Mm -hmm. Or a false Christ. And whoever believes in that Jesus will not be given power to become the sons of God. Right. Yeah. God won't do it. Mm -hmm. Gave he power. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting word. Some versions say he gave the right. Mm -hmm. Or he authorized. Or it was a prerogative. Or he gave authority. Or the privilege or he made to be. Or gave authority, power, and privilege. Those are all fairly good translations the word translated power for whoever's interested is exousia it's used 103 times in scripture in the authorized version it's translated authority and power those are the two most dominant words the lexical meaning of this word power is the power of choice permission, authority, right or privilege, the power of judicial decisions. Hmm. All right, now we're, we're learning something about salvation here. We learn that becoming the sons of God is not achieved by an automatic process. It has to do with the ability of the receiver <coughs> who has been empowered to make a proper choice. Amen. That's, right. yeah. huh? yeah. That's what we're talking about here. Yeah. It also involves the authority to take advantage of the privilege that is being offered. Yes. Yeah. Like Ahasuerus, that's Esther's husband, uh -huh. yeah. when he stretched forward his scepter, uh -huh. she could come near. When he gives power to become the sons of God, he's stretching out the scepter. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Said, you can come. Yeah. You've received my son, you can, you can come. Yeah. You've received my son just like I described him, you can, you can yeah. come now. You can Amen. come right. to me. The Lord enables the one who hears the gospel to believe and act upon it. Amen. Yeah. That's power. He has the right to make that determination uh -huh. and to give you the ability to believe and come. Mm -hmm. Now everybody is, isn't, uh, and that results in change. Uh -huh. Everyone doesn't believe when it's declared. Mm -hmm. The scripture says uh, that some are blinded uh -huh. when it's preached, when the truth is preached. Here's what it says. What then Israel hath not obtained it, is obtained hath not obtained that which it seeketh after. For, but the election, that's the people with, that's the Israel within Israel. Uh -huh. yeah. But the election obtained it. See? Yes. They had power to become Amen. sons of God. Right. How about the rest were blinded? Yeah. So you, you ask the question, well, how is it that some people believed some people didn't believe they both heard the same message from the same person. Uh -huh. Some believed, some some were given power. That's right. Amen. Some were blinded. That's right. Uh -huh. It was judicial, divine, right. judicially imposed yeah. Yeah. judgment. Amen. And it was righteous. That's right. It, there wasn't anyone that wanted it that God said no to. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And there wasn't anyone that didn't want it that God said yes to. He said, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. power. This is what he's, yes, sir, you're elaborating on that, yes, what sir. he's doing there, yeah. See, in Acts 19, 9, that Paul was in the synagogue in Ephesus. He preached, some were hardened and believed not. That is, they were not given power to become the sons of God. <laughs> That's still happening. This is still happening. You can't assume, I mean, you can't use human judgment and figure this out, mm -hmm. but this does explain where yes. 
what happens. He who gives power, he gave he then gave the gave he power. That's right. The he is the exalted Christ. Amen. That's the one who's being delineated in this first chapter. But Christ, who worked in the beginning, was the Word. With, and then all through this, is, this is the activity of the exalted Christ that we're yeah, talking right. about. He is a subject. All power in heaven and earth has been given to him. Yes, and this is the power on earth yes. now we're talking about. A believer receiving Jesus is like a lame man picking up his bed and walking. That's the equivalent, just, yeah, just, just yeah. said, surely. It's like Lazarus coming out of the tomb. He received power. To become, <laughs> to become the sons of God. It's like a man with a withered hand stretching it out. See, that's equivalent to that. He was given power to become the sons of God. A believer receiving Jesus has been given power or authority, or the prerogative to do so. Yeah, he has seen Jesus. God's opened up his eyes to see who he is. Mm -hmm. His heart is beat with joy. Yeah. He wants that Jesus. Uh -huh. See, that's all being given power to become the sons of God. Amen. He calls upon the name of the Lord. Yeah. See, that he's been given power yes. to become the children of God. Given power to become the sons of God or God's children. Men often speak of receiving Christ. Receive Christ into your heart. That's a common, common uh, perception. And there's a sense in which that's true because as many as received him. So there's a sense in which that definitely, that definitely is true. However, behind the scenes, there are some other factors. Such people are being given to Jesus by the Father. Amen. Yes. That's involved in given power to become the sons of God. Jesus has received them yes. to the glory of God. Uh -huh. Romans 15, 7. So see, even more important than you receiving Christ is Christ receiving you. Amen. Yes. If he did, then he, you were given power yeah. to become the children of God. They have been given to believe, when yes. he is given to believe. See, that's power uh -huh. is given to them to become the sons of God. So that's just spelling the details out of that. To them gave you power to become the sons of God. They were drawn to Jesus by God. Yeah. See, that was being given power mm -hmm. to become the children of God. Even to them, the next phrase is, even to them. Yeah. The Spirit underscores the boundary. Uh -huh, yes. Nobody else. To them. That's right. Well, all this was happening to them. Uh -huh. that's, that's your evidence. You've been given power. Amen. That believe on his name. Now, what? That, now, see, that's a little more challenging. That believe on his name. In other words, it say believe in his name, had faith in his name, put their trust in his person and power. The name, that refers to Christ's person. That's right, amen. Yeah. That's who he is. Mm -hmm. For example, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And again, this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our Righteousness. This is who the Lord is. And now let's, let's serve, believe on his name. Let's, those who believe on the name wonderful refuse to be enamored by someone else. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. They believe on the name. Uh -huh. Those who believe on the name counselor yeah. will not receive direction from anybody else. Amen. Yes. Those who believe in the name the mighty God will not seek deliverance from any other person. Amen. The one believing on the name Everlasting Father will not seek sustenance or care from anybody else. Amen. Those who believe on the Prince of Peace, the name of the Prince of Peace, will never compromise with the enemy or seek peace by any means. Yeah. 
Those who believe on the name, the Lord our righteousness, will not seek to develop their own righteousness. See, that's believing on the name. Yeah, you, you receive him in the capacity in which he has been revealed. See, you would be surprised, <laughs> or maybe you wouldn't be so surprised, at the extremely large percentage of Christians that really don't know who Jesus is. They've heard Son of God, died on the cross, died for our sins, this, this is about it. It's pretty hard to believe on a name that you don't even know. See, it's a multifaceted name, and to believe on the name of Jesus, to believe how he has been declared. All these things you've just spoken about, the name of Christ, every one of them will, will take a certain amount of cost for you to believe it. As you grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, you will have to shed something in order to believe on that aspect of his name. Yeah, amen. Now here's something else that registers strongly on my spirit, that you... You can have no more of Jesus than you can see and believe and trust him to be. Yeah, amen. That's right. So you're limited by your vision. Amen. Yeah. If you have a small vision, there's a small number of things you can receive. Amen. Yeah. Just the way it is. This perfectly parallels what Paul said. We are, as we behold the glory of the Lord, we're changed. Into the same image. See, you are, you can only attain what you can perceive Christ to be. That's all. If you have a small, itty bitty view of Jesus, then you get a small, itty bitty inheritance. That's all you can get. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. But now, what you make of that? That's what believing on his name has to do with. And we believe through grace. It's important to notice that. Now to them is given the, the right to become the sons of God. Uh, but, but how were they born? See, because life has to be born. If a mother carries a child and it's never born, the child dies. The child, a living thing has to be born. A birth. Born again or born after the Spirit or born of Him or born of God or begotten us again or begotten of Him, begotten of God. See, it has, it has begotten as a, when it's conceived, in, it has to be birthed. The ones who are born are the ones who receive Christ. Nobody else is born. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Nobody else is born. Mm -hmm. They haven't received Christ mm -hmm. as he's revealed. Yeah. They're not born again. Yeah. That, that, the receiving has to take place yeah. first. For before, When you're born, the process of birth translates you out away from the power of darkness mm -hmm into the kingdom of God's dear son. That's the details of what happened. Womb to earth. See, out of the power of darkness into these marvel into the kingdom of his dear son or into his marvelous light, Peter would say. They were delivered from the power of darkness when they were baptized into Christ. They were born then. When they were born they became a new creation. It's a new it's a new kind of birth. That's right. New kind of birth. It's a new creation. Old things passed away, everything became new. Yeah. And they were seated with Christ in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Now this is those that received yeah. him. The ones who received him are the ones that believed on the name, yeah. how he was revealed. Uh -huh. These were born again and then they were identified with Christ and placed with him. So this was the birth that was initiated and brought to its intended culmination. Yeah, yeah. How were they born? What? Not of blood. Which were born not of blood. Yeah. Not by natural descent. Some versions say not by human parents or human stock. And some of these versions, they really, they really garble this up. 
He's not talking about just natural birth. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's talking about Jewish birth. Mm -hmm. Up until Jesus, the bloodline was everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. The people right. had to trace their bloodline back to Abraham, Isaac, and That's Jacob. Right. Uh -huh. When you're born again, that's not what's done. Now, some people were in the covenant simply because their parents were in it. That's right. That's not the way it is. Amen. Catholic and Presbyterian theology notwithstanding, that's not the way it is. Yeah. It's not by blood. Mm. The fleshly descent was intact up until Mary and Joseph. Mm -hmm. It started at Seth, yeah. the bloodline. It right. was of blood. Uh -huh. They were born all the way up to Mary and Joseph. Yeah. 75 generations but with Jesus that bloodline no good Amen. doesn't work it's another kind of blood that sanctifies Amen. you now so because your parents are very good Christians that doesn't mean you are it's not the way it happens in fact faith cannot even be passed to the next generation the, there, there's no such thing as a second generation that has faith because the first generation had it. Right. Yes, Paul Now it's the blood of the covenant. Blood of the covenant. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly yeah. it. Yeah. What you're saying affirms that Israel, the covenant made with Israel before Christ, that was the only covenant that was valid with God. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Yes. It's That's before right. this, the, it was blood a, of, the blood of this covenant. And that was determined by a bloodline. Yeah, That's right. Yes. But this is, this is not how the ones that receive Christ are born but not not that way. That's right. uh -huh. It's not once a Baptist, always a Baptist. I mean, uh -huh. this isn't. <laughs> you just be surprised how many people think this way. I'm not just picking on them. This is every denomination has their own uh -huh. heritage, so to speak. Proper lineage for the inclusion in Israel was traced back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But when it comes to being born again, yeah. that's out. Your faith is traced back to Abraham, not your blood. So it's not by blood, not of the will of the flesh. Yes. Some versions read, not of human decision. It's the NIV. From the impulse of the flesh, basic Bible English. Physical impulse, Jewish Bible. Amplified Bible, not of physical impulse. Will of the flesh. That is, you can't produce an external environment that's designed to hype, hype the people up. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's of the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. But people do try and do this oh, now. Yes. Yeah. Right. People try and do this. Mm -hmm. Got the drum beating and yeah. uh -huh. guitars are playing and the mm -hmm. lights are turned down. And that's of the flesh. That's right. Nobody's brought to birth by that means. Amen. can't be based on a decision that appeals to raw emotion mm -hmm. or not by the will of man. Yeah. The, new, the New Living Translation did pretty good on this. A human plan. Uh -huh. That's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Will of man. Doesn't mean because man wanted to. It's man conceived of a way to be born again. See this question, what must I do to be a Christian? That's not even a right qu question. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That question is never asked in scripture. Uh -huh. yeah. what, must, what do I have to do to become a Christian? See that's a traditional yeah. posture. What must I do to be saved? Now that, that's a scriptural, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. scriptural question. But men, see, they concoct plans that you have to ask about them. Or somebody, some people preach them every time they stand in the pulpit, they preach their plans. Uh -huh. yeah. But that's not, these plans don't accomplish the birth we're talking about here. Amen. Amen. Not a human strategy, a surefire program that guarantees a person will become a Christian. And because you did that, you received the Holy Spirit. Uh, yeah, we can't prove you did, but you did. It says you did, and you did. Listen, I, was, I cut my teeth on this kind of teaching. Both they weren't born by 
blood and, and will of flesh, the will of man. What, 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 are, what were they born by? But of God. Those who receive the privilege of becoming the sons of God are themselves God's workmanship. Amen. God produced these people. Not a plan, not a heritage, not an emotion. God produced these people. They are His workmanship. Ephesians 2.10. In other words, it say they are His act or God's accomplishment, or God's making, or His creation, His handiwork, God's work of art, God's masterpiece. So tonight, if you're in Christ, you're a product of God's work. Amen. <laughs> God's made. You were born because of what God did, not because of what you did. Amen. You did something. We all know that. Yeah. But the thing that made the birth a birth wasn't what you did, is what God did. Amen. In redemption, God's working now through the Son. you got to understand that. He delivered all things over to the Son. He's committed all judgment to the Son, giving Him power over all flesh. Now, here's what it says about Jesus. John 5, 21. The Son quickeneth whom He will. Yeah, amen. Amen. Ah, yeah. What? The Son quickens or makes alive yeah. whom he will. The Son makes alive whoever he wants to make alive. Right. It's not like an arbitrary choice. It's based on receiving him. See, see, even if you received Christ as he's been declared, if Jesus didn't make you alive, you'd still stay dead. Amen. That's right. You'd still stay dead. You had to be made alive. Amen. And he's the one. That's what a birth is. Yeah. All a baby has to do with being born is he, you know, kicks and struggles. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Amen. It's about all you did, too. Yeah. That's right. There you have it. Jesus is the sole administrator mm. of the kingdom. He's invested with all the power in heaven and earth. Mm. And they're born, people are born through his activity because they received him as he was presented in the record God gave of his son. They believed it, they trusted in it, they shaped their lives around it, and Jesus took it from there. Amen. Well, that's good stuff now, brother. I don't mind telling you. It's uh, <laughs> marvelously simple but very confusing to the flesh. And if you have a word you'd like to add tonight? Deep Pardon? Yeah. Deep 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 yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. And then this will definitely create confidence in you if you oh, believe it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jason. Oh, yeah. yeah, isn't it true that most people think of religion, even Christianity, as a means to get something? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. means yeah. to an end. They, they want to yeah. get something. And this text is telling us to receive a person. Amen. And of course, Amen. once you receive the person, you get all the good stuff. Amen. Yeah. But you can't get any of the good stuff without God and His Son. Amen. Yeah. And that's the big. You started out. I remember what you said earlier about utopia. Yeah. And you know, that's an example of people wanting all of the benefits of yeah. the kingdom of God, but without God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, and you can't. You can't have it that way. They think they can manage it. Yeah. You know, not only can you not get it mm -hmm. without Christ, you can't manage it. Yeah. Without That's Christ. Right. That's right. It'll leak out of the vessel. Amen. <laughs> yes. He's called us into fellowship with his father. Yeah. And the father's yeah. called us into fellowship with himself through him. Amen. Amen. Well, Continuing. Marvelous. And he doesn't say a body, receive a body of doctrine. That's right. Or a church. <laughs> or a church. <laughs> yeah, it's not the church, it's the head of the church. Yeah. That's, that's the real issue there. Yes. That is the best exposition of that. We're born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God that I've ever heard. It is. And the reason for it that is that it it lifts it up out, it's like this is what this is what appears what can be seen through what was declared 
that Jesus was the Son of God. But this actually explains it and breaks it down. It, it's actually like the seed yeah. of the rest of the yeah. book. Amen. Now, this is going to open up further in the rest of the book uh, how that that none of these things are possible except it be the work of God. It raises our mind up to where we can look at things on a spiritual level instead of just in the Amen. This is something else that is uh, growing on me. No other God provides such a lengthy explanation of his work. See, God, it teaches you that God wants you to know what he does and why he does it. And that that's what stabilizes. See, it's your understanding of God, that's what stabilizes you. And he also tells you what you did, too. You just didn't say, I do. You, you received him. You believed on his name. Yes, Brother Tony. Telling us in detail of what he, how he's works, how he's doing it. He's taking all this out of the out of the out of the uh, hands of That's men, right. so we can put all our confidence in him. Amen. None of this has to do with anything we we can do. Amen. He's doing it all. Now, Amen. see, he wrote this truth on your heart when you were born again. That's right. But you, until you heard it. It didn't make sense, but when you heard it, you it wasn't because you were so smart. It was that he wrote this. See, this he wrote in your heart his nature and his purpose. It's like written in your heart so that when it happens, you could say, this is that. And you recognize it. So now, knowing that, you can assess your, you can kind of assess where you are, and I can tell you that most of you are further than you think. You've come further than you think. Because I'd rather be that way than I haven't come as far as I think, you know. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the revelation of the Son. How uh, you have so precisely and gloriously defined him, and we see that this is precisely what we required. And you've made us glad. You've made us glad, Father, by telling us these things. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.